Okay, let's talk about the Alex Math Placement Exam. So if you're watching this video, I assume you are preparing to take the Alex uh, test, which of course is a math placement exam that many uh, institutions, colleges and universities uh, use to basically determine you know, what level of math you're going to place into. Uh, now, the Alex isn't the only placement exam, but it's one of the more popular ones. It's uh, actually a pretty interesting uh, placement exam as uh, it really kind of focuses in on your individual math skills that you know. And in most cases, and I don't know exactly how this works uh, in terms of each university or college, but uh, oftentimes you will have a chance to improve your initial score uh, until uh, before, uh, I guess, a final determination of where you're going to place uh, into is going to be made. So that's kind of like a general description of the Alex exam. But what I have here is a practice problem that you should be able to handle pretty nicely if you're fully prepared for the Alex math placement exam. Now, of course, um, uh, some of you out there are going to know a lot more math than others, so you're going to be placing it in uh, various levels. But uh, all of you, you know, if you're going to uh, college, you know, or applying to a particular university, you know, you should be strong in high school level math. Okay, I guess that's a pretty good description of it. So at least basic level high school level math, which would be uh, algebra and geometry. Okay, but then there's more advanced stuff as well. But let's say you you know, aren't even, you know, comfortable with basic algebra, well, then obviously that will show up on the Alex and you'll place accordingly. But you shouldn't feel bad about that. Um, you know, you're going to have to kind of work with whatever math skills you currently have. But you should try to improve before you take the Alex as that's an important uh, test for sure. Okay, so we're going to get this get to this practice problem here in a second. But first, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. Also a middle and high school math teacher, and over several years I've constructed many online math courses to include an Alex Math uh, Placement Test Prep uh, course. Okay, I'm going to leave a link to that in uh, the description of this video. I've had many, many people uh, successfully uh, use that um, course to prepare for the Alex. Again, you want to do your best. Uh, you want to place into the highest level course you can because it's going to save you time and money. Okay, so if you have the ability to place into a higher level course, um, you know, and you end up in a lower course that you really don't, you know, really shouldn't have to be there, you're going to have to spend a semester or two spending the the money and the time uh, before you get to the course that you really could have placed into. So take this test serious, and by virtue of you watching this video. I know that you are. So let's go ahead and get to this practice problem. So let me tell you what's going on here, okay? We have a set of coordinates, okay? And the problem is this. I want to know if this is a function, okay? So is it a function? And if so, if it is a function, what is its inverse, okay? So the question is, is it, does this represent a function? And if it does represent a function, what is the inverse function? All right, now the way I like to do these little problems is uh, let you kind of think about it, you out there in you know, YouTube land. <laughs> you know, Watch a video, think about the problem, and if you can do it, you should try to pause the video and do it. Now I'm going to give a hint here in a second. If you don't want to hear the hint, obviously pause the video, and then, then obviously I'm going to uh, uh, solve this problem. Okay, so here comes the hint. All right, so first of all, I gotta ask myself, is this a function, right? That's the first determination. Now, how can you answer this question? Well, obviously you need to know what a function is, all right? What is a function? And I want you to think back uh, to domain and range. Okay, you studied those type of things before. Uh, let me see, I'll give you a couple other hints. Vertical line test. Uh, now, I'm just kind of throwing things out there to kind of refresh your memory about the, con the topic of functions. Now, this is an extremely important part of math. Now, if you are totally lost, you're like, I don't even know what this is, domain and range, I don't really re remember what that is, then you're probably going to have a difficult time with this problem. But if you're like, oh, yes, I remember the VLT, uh, domain and range, etc., then 
then, you know, I'm kind of refreshing your memory about the topic of functions. Now, uh, functions you can represent in uh, a number of different ways, okay? You can look at them graphically, or you can construct a model, okay, or a mapping uh, of a function, which I'm going to do here in a second. Now, once we've determined uh, whether this represents a function, these set of points here, then we'll talk about the inverse. So let's go ahead and, and get into this now. This is a huge topic. So if um, you know you don't fully grasp everything I'm saying, don't panic. Okay, just use this as feedback on um, you know studying and, and improving. But you got to definitely know uh, at least the basics about functions to to do reasonably well on Alex. All right. So what I'm going to do here is. I'm going to con uh, construct a mapping diagram, and it can kind of looks like this, if you will. This is a really good way to look at functions. Now, <clears throat> you're probably saying, well, what is this guy doing? He's drawing these little oval things. Well, I'll explain here in a second. So each one of these right here are a point, okay, an ordered pair on the xy plane. So in other words, this is some specific xy point, okay? Now, what we can do, we can look at this a little bit differently when we're trying to uh, see if this represents a function. So we're going to put our x's here and our y's over here. And the way a function works is that x maps to y, okay? And the x's are associated with the domain of a function and the y is associated with the range of a function. Now, at this point, we don't know if this is a function or not. But a mapping diagram <clears throat> is a great way to model what's going on with a set of ordered pairs. Okay, it's a good way to um, learn about functions and the concepts of functions because it's a nice, easy way to see things. All right, so how does this work? All right, so here we have the point 1, 3. So the x value here is 1, okay, and the y value is 3. So 1 is mapping to 3. Okay, so you kind of see what I've done there. Now, we're not going to uh, uh, duplicate any numbers. In other words, if there was another point here, let's just say 1, 7, I wouldn't go 1, 7 like that. Okay, what I would do in this case, I would leave the 1 there and say 1 maps to 7. Okay, so you don't duplicate the x's there because that's not going to help us determine whether this is a function or not. All right, so knowing that, let's go ahead and finish out this mapping. So we have negative 2 maps to 6. And by the way, just as I um, had 1 mapping to 7, it's the same thing with the y. So if I have the, uh, the same y, okay, I'm just going to just not going not gonna, I'm not going to write that number twice. All right, so negative 2 maps to 6. Let's see here, 0 maps to uh, 1. And 3... Uh, also is mapping to 1. Okay, so we have 3 goes to 1 like so. So that was kind of what I was trying to say here just a second. Now, now we have our mapping completed. So this is where uh, you need to understand what the concept of a function is. Lots of different ways you can kind of think of a function. But in essence, uh, when it comes to a mapping diagram, each x value can only map to one and only uh, one and only one unique y point. Okay, so let me say this again: each x value, all right, can only map to one y point. So let's look. Let's take a look here. So I have one. It maps only to three. Okay, so that's good. All right, so it's one is being mapped to one uh, only one y point. Negative two is mapping to only one uh, y point, okay? Zero is also mapping to one y point. Now, you might be saying, well, what about this here, this three? Well, three is only going to one y point as well. It can, it can be the same y point as another x, okay? That's not a problem, all right? So in this situation where each x is going to only one in, um, uh, one unique y point, this represents a function, okay? Now, let's uh, let's kind of mess this up a little bit for a second. Now, what if I had three, well, let's say I had one mapping to three 
and one mapping to six. So that means that I would have the point one six uh, in my set here. If I had that, if I had one trying to map to three and one trying to map to six, this would indicate that this was uh, not a function. Okay, so this fails, all right? So in this situation, this is okay. It can be very confusing for students to you know realize this, but again, uh, the idea of functions very, very uh, important in math. And this is only one way we can um, model functions, okay? But guarantee you that you're going to, you know, need to have a real firm grasp on uh, functions. Okay, so this is a function, okay? And now uh, that we answer that, let's talk about finding the inverse function. So the inverse function, uh, what we could do is simply flip this around, okay? Basically, the, let's do it this way. All right. Now, sometimes, here's another thing here, is um, the, just because something is a function doesn't mean that it always is going to have an inverse, all right? So really, we're talking about this whole broad topic of something called relations in uh, mathematics, okay? Now, some relations are functions, okay and some functions have inverse functions okay so just because this has a function may uh if we still don't know if this in fact has an inverse function so but if it does here's the way it works so here i have my domain and my range my x's and my y's uh basically the inverse is the domain and range get switched so this is the domain Okay, this is the function, and this will be the inverse function, okay? So the domain for this guy and the range of this guy, what we're going to do is we're going to flip-flop the values, okay? So here we'll put in 3, 6, 1 as the domain, okay? We're just looking at the range, the output values of this function, and we're going to make them the input values and then we're going to make the input values of domain the range of uh, in terms of it being the inverse. So let's go ahead and do that. 1, negative 2, let's see here, 0, and 3. So let's go ahead and just uh, reverse the mapping. So 3 maps to 1. Uh, let's see here, 6 maps to negative 2. So far, there's no problems. And now I have 1 mapping to 0 and one mapping to three. Okay, so here you can see we have a problem, okay? Because one cannot map to zero and one cannot map to three. So in fact, if we did have an inverse, um, it would be, uh, we wouldn't, it, the inverse in the mapping would still follow the rules of what I just described, what a function is. So this inverse function is failing right here, okay? So this is not, we don't have an inverse for this particular function. So in the end, okay, what we had here is in fact, yes, this is a function, but it does not have an inverse. So, um, you know, if you got this problem uh, correct without any hints, that's, you know, very good. I mean, it kind of uh, definitely illustrates that you have a, a pretty good grasp on what functions are. If you, you know, needed a hint and kind of remembered some of this stuff, then that's good as well. Uh, and if you were completely lost, don't panic. You know, use this as feedback. The main idea here is this. Uh, for those of you who are like, yeah, I kind of remember this topic, you know, and after you explained it, I remember studying this stuff. You know, if you're kind of like thinking in those terms, that's not going to really help you on the Alex. <laughs> you know, you can't go on to be like, yeah, I kind of remember this, uh, but how do I solve this problem, right? With the Alex or math placement, you're going into college level mathematics. You've got to know your stuff, okay? Um, and uh, generally speaking, the pace of college math is going to be faster than what it, what it was in high school. So. The, the right thing to do here is to just immerse yourself in a good study program and prepare as, uh, you know, as much as you can for the Alex, okay? Because one, you're going to do uh, as best as possible, you know, on the actual exam and you're going to just be that much more ready 
for your college mathematics course, whatever that is. And generally speaking, if you're taking Alex, you're going to be facing at a minimum of one college class, probably more than that uh, for most majors. Okay, but hopefully uh, a little video like this just helps you know remind you of um, you know how to uh, approach um, this test. All right, so let's go ahead and wrap this uh, video up. Again, I'm going to leave a link to my um, Alex uh, Math. Uh, test prep course in a description of this video. Extremely comprehensive. I think you'll really like it. So if you like my teaching style, my best work is there. If you're new to my YouTube channel, hopefully you'll consider subscribing. I already have uh, hundreds of videos on my channel that could help you out, and I'm posting stuff all the time. And if you like this video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up. And leave me some feedback. Uh, what's what's your situation? Are you coming right from high school into, into college, or maybe you've been you know, working for several years and you're going back to school and you've been told you have to take the Alex test. And for those of you out there that are in that category, uh, don't panic. I hear this all the time. Like, oh, I've been away from school so many years. How am I going to relearn this stuff? Believe me when I tell you, um, uh, those of you out there that are older, I would say in your 20s or, or even uh, 30s, 40s, doesn't make a difference. You're going to be a better math student than you were in high school. I think that's a good general rule of thumb. Okay. Um, but most of you think the opposite. You're like, I'm going to be a worse student than I was in high school because I'm further away from it. But the whole idea about learning math is just being, um, you know, committed and focused. And believe me when I tell you, uh, as a teacher and see what's going on in the classroom. And, you know, obviously I'm <laughs> being a young person myself, there's so many distractions in school when you're in high school. It's it's sometimes tough to really you know stay focused. But you know as an adult, I think you're going to find uh, learning math much easier than you uh, did in the past. But you got to get with a good study program. If you like my teaching style, my course can really help you. But anyways, with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best on the Alex uh, placement exam. I hope you do really well and get into the courses that you want. Um, Thank you for your time and have a great day.